Today I review The Little Mermaid. I know what you're thinking, I've gone mainstream on you. First I review Bend It Like Beckham, now The Little Mermaid, what's going on? But no, this is a 1975 Japanese version. Right away we start off with Marina, The Little Mermaid, and her best friend, Fritz the Dolphin, being caught in a horrible storm started by the Sea Witch. The next morning, Marina and Fritz go investigate the wrecked ship on the bottom of the sea. And she finds a statue of the prince immediately falling in love. Are you sick or something, Marina? I want to visit the surface. It must be wonderful there. Much nicer than my sisters tell me. Oh, I want to go too. Can you get permission to go? Hey! I've got an idea. What is it? Well, tonight we'll wait until everyone has gone to sleep, and then we'll slip out of the palace. See, Marina's never been to the surface, but her sisters are much older, and they get a little pearl pendant that allows them free passage wherever they wish to go. And they come back and taunt Marina with tales of the surface. But Fritz has an idea. He blackmails his uncle Duke, who's a whale, into bringing them to the surface, and she spies the prince for the first time face to face. That boy looks just like the marble statue we saw on that ship. Hey, what's, what's that? What is it, your highness? There's a mermaid over there on that iceberg. Mermaid? I'm afraid the excitement of your birthday party has got you seeing things, your highness. Just then, a second storm is summoned by the Sea Witch, sinking the prince's vessel. She dives into the sea, saves him from the wreckage, and, while on shore, heals him with her mermaid scales. Because I guess the mermaid scales have healing properties? Who knew? No. Please, dear God, no. Don't let him die. Oh, please, my prince. His lips moved. I saw them. He's alive. Don't worry, my prince. I'll stay with you till you're all right. Marina's father finds out that she went to the surface and is very disappointed in her and worried that she could die because she's so young. I have any idea how much worry you caused us last night. As you know, our race normally lives for 3,000 years, but we can still meet with an accident and die any time, as your poor mother did. Forgive. The vague and slightly morbid mention of her mother's premature death is never brought up again, but her dad immediately realizes that she saved a human that would have otherwise died. So she's given her coronation as full mermaid and given a little pearl pendant for her hair and everything. We even get a song! Just being able to visit the surface isn't enough. She wants to be a human. So off to the Sea Witch we go. And the Sea Witch is guarded by horrible sea creatures. But don't worry, Fritz kicks her ass. Becoming human, of course, comes with a price. If you cannot 
not win the prince's love for yourself, the morning after his marriage to another, your heart will break and you will turn to foam. Yes, in this version, she doesn't have three days. She has until the morning after his wedding. If he marries someone else, as soon as the sun rises in the morning, she will turn into foam. Also, she can't talk, and she can never become a mermaid again. She becomes human, he finds her passed out on the beach, brings her into the castle, and they live together. A month later, he finally gives her a name, Princess Mermaid, because her music sounds like it comes straight from the sea. Oh, how sweet. It took you a month to talk to her. And he's saving her from wolves, and he's falling in love with her. You're my little mermaid princess. Do you like that name? Then from now on, I shall call you Princess Mermaid. It sounds as lovely as you look. That's just where it starts to get crazy. You see, the wolves were alerted by the prince's cat, Jemmy, who can talk and everyone can understand. So Jemmy, the cat, remember, goes to the king and queen, tells them that the prince is being seduced by this weird mute girl and that they should marry him off before she takes control of him. So they force him into marriage. He tells her, Wow, well, I wish I could marry you. And if not you, the woman who saved me when I almost drowned. Because he doesn't remember her saving him. He just remembers being found on the shore by a woman with black hair. Are you all right? Can you hear me? Oh, thank God he's alive. By the mother of all coincidences, it turns out that the woman the prince's parents are forcing him to marry is the woman with the black hair that he thinks had saved him, the woman of his dreams. So, poor Marina is going to die a sad and horrible death, and Fritz is not taking it well. What's the matter? Is the prince going to marry another? Oh no, Marina, it can't be true. If he marries another, then, then, the morning after his wedding, he'll be turned to foam. Isn't that what the sea witch said? No! <laughs> oh, I can't bear the thought of you dying, Marina! Don't worry, though, boys and girls. Fritz has a plan to get out of this. The prince can't marry anyone if he's dead. Yes, Fritz, lovable dolphin, psychopath. In the scene we don't see, he goes back to the sea witch with Marina's sisters. They give their hair to the sea witch in exchange for a magical dagger. You must plunge the knife into the prince's heart. When his blood sprinkles your feet, they'll join together and become a tail. You'll become a mermaid again. Alas, she loves the prince too much and cannot kill him. Instead, killing herself, leaving behind her pearl pendant, which the prince finds, remembers instantly that she was actually the one that saved him and that he's married to the wrong person. But too late, she's already dead. Roll credits. Overall, yeah, this one is based on the actual novel, unlike the Disney film, and his happy endings. But I think Disney did the right thing. Uh, the Little Mermaid would not have been a classic if Ariel had offed herself, and the prince had married some random girl you never met. Thank you for watching, and as always, I shall try to do better next time.